Hello and welcome to Business Edition. In this program, we have with us Dr. Bravius Kahioza, who is a lecturer at the University of Dar es Salaam and also an economic analyst. We've been looking at uh, the recently unveiled uh, budget by the government of Tanzania uh, for the financial year 2021-2022. Uh, what are people saying? What are people thinking about this? Are we seeing um, uh, relief? Are we seeing tightening of belts? We'll find out more as we talk uh, with uh, Dr. Bravius. Welcome to the program. Hi, my pleasure. I'm okay. profoundly honored to be with you. Okay, tell me. Um, Expectations from Tanzanians, they are hoping for something that is going to um, bring them relief, um, something that's going to bring um, economic uh, growth in the country as well. Uh, so looking at this recently unveiled uh, budget estimates by the government, what is your take on this so far? Uh, should, we be, should, we, uh, should we be hopeful or um, also be prepared for some hard times ahead of us? Uh a very nice uh, question, uh, Yvonne. Um, I think, uh, as always, during the budgeting uh, processes and during the reading of the budget, is when the citizens, the citizenry uh, in any nation, are hoping to know where their share is uh, from the national CAC. And the budget is a tool, both economically and politically, to, to do that. Um, I think the questions people are trying to address um, are in two fronts. One is what you're saying. Uh, will it um, uh, stimulate uh, their ways of uh, living? Uh, and, and number two, uh, will the budget spur economic growth that has uh, dwindled for uh, the last year? And of course, for the records, uh, this is the, uh, the slowest pace for 12 years uh, in our countries, uh, many economists, business people, journalists like you are uh, questioning, are interrogating the budget in that, in, that, in that area. But before I go further, um, one thing should be made clear. Our government, like in African states, from the economic speak, um, economically, I mean, um, developed in terms of their aspirations. Mm -hmm. They are underdeveloped in terms of capacity. And that is one thing to note when we are discussing uh, the budgeting process, because politicians will promise everything, academicians and public intellectuals will say the government has to do this, you journalists will hold the government accountable, and the citizens will expect everything from the government. That's not how it works, particularly in the way our economy is. And that's a problem of pegging, I think, of, of the thinking that our economic um, management looks like that of the United States of America or Japan or another country. And it, for the records, um, uh, for the benefit of our viewers, uh, the, you can't the, the current budget, for example, uh, of, of USA will be in the tune of 7.6 trillion. And uh, with a population of 328 people, that is per capita uh, spending of every individual in the tune of 23,000 US dollars. That's over 56 uh, billion. Uh, that's over 56 million dollars uh, and shillings. Uh, so you come here with our budget, even if you don't look at the discretionary budget, you take in its totality 36 trillion, you find with a population of around 60 million people, per capita spending of the government for every individual is uh, roughly uh, below uh, 185 US dollars. So it's. Uh, well, we're looking at. A, a, a com you can't compare the economy of Tanzania can't and compare that to the that, US. Yeah. But for that 36.33 yeah. mm. uh, trillion. Yes. Isn't that uh, a, a good figure to go with? Um, it's a 4% increase from compared to last year, isn't it? Sure, that's an increase. My, my, the point I want to bring home is that. Uh, any questions related to this budget should not be looked in terms of the government should provide everything. I know the government is in the good move to uh, enhance the PPP, the private public partnership uh, policies, laws and the, and the like, to make the economy functional. Uh, so that's, that's number one. Number two is that I was very impressed by the theme of the budget, that is building the competitive economy uh, industrialization for human development. Uh, again, of course, that's not new. If you remember in 2016, 17, from Dr. Mpango, who was the Minister by then of Finance, uh, if you go to page 10 of his uh, speech, uh, that was the main question, uh, again, human development. So six years 
down the line. The main question is, have budgets for the last six years improved uh, the livelihoods uh, of the people uh, is something we have to grapple with in this discussion. But we have also to look at um, the strategic areas, uh, the, the, the main issue the government is addressing. Again, I would say, I'm impressed because uh, you have 7.4, something like that, going to the main projects, the strategic projects, uh, that is almost... So that's a good thing. That's a good thing mm -hmm. for the infrastructures and so on, mm -hmm. because we've been saying our government uh, investment GDP ratio is very small, and that cannot enhance productivity in the economy. Uh, so that's a very good thing. And the, and the minister was categorical that um, we're not having the, the white shell funds in the projects. We have to accomplish everything that was started by the previous government. Um, that's very important. But on the human development, of course, as another target uh, from the five-year development plan, uh, a theme is that uh, the budget will address the social affairs, for example, health, uh, water, uh, and, uh, education and the like, and there is also a huge chunk of money, almost 7 trillion, uh, that is also 26% of the discretionary budget, again, of the 26 uh, trillion, uh, that's a good amount of money. Another thing that is uh, put there is about trade and investment, we have to boost that, of course, um, uh, there is a uh, more than uh, that billion of uh, the blueprint, of the business blueprint. That's recommendable again, if um, uh, all come to fruition. Um, and then you have about the skills development. Um, our economy is um, challenged, of course, um, the, at times crippled by lack of uh, the skills that are needed in the, in the, in the market, uh, in the job market, of course. Uh, and there is uh, like 50 billion shillings, that's Commend up as well. Uh, so generally, if you look at this main strategic area, the budget is uh, is well put. Uh, but again, you have to measure that not from the 20, not from the 36 trillion Tanzanian shillings. You have to measure that from the 26. That's what we call this question by the the amount of money that the government is going to spend because 10 billion is will be going to the uh, pay uh, the debt. Uh, service and if uh, time allows, we'll talk about a bit about that. Mm. So if one, those are the main areas, but you have, um, you know, uh, some... Okay. Can I just cut you there? Those are the main areas and you said the good things, mm. um, but uh, are we going to see a trickling effect from these, um, these areas down to the people? Because people, uh, the low-income people, they, they, they want to see some money in their pockets, you know. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. these projects, do you think they're going mm -hmm. to contribute to make that trickling effect down to the low-income people? Uh, that, that, that's, um, uh, that's a, there's a delicate balance in that. Mm -hmm. You have some things that are trying to show that there will be, you, that it's going to drizzle to the people. Uh, for example, the decrease of pay as you earn, someone would argue that the 8% will allow the employers uh, time will allow the employers to increase their uh, consumption space and as we stand today in the economy for everyone civil servant in Tanzania uh, sub, I, 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 10 people uh, are depending on him or her mm -hmm. uh, so if you reduce uh, pay as you end that's a good thing my view has been uh, you can even scrap it to four percent because you can recoup that amount of money through the VAT if the economy is well managed uh, you have um, uh, things to do with uh, uh, the question of the young people and the border border thing. You have heard about it, the, the fine from 30,000 to 10,000, and I think that's good. I think Even though people are worried that it might actually um, contribute to increase of accidents. Uh, respectively, Yvonne, I think people are arguing that way. That's a, a flawed economic argument because you, when you are looking at the policies, you look the policy matrix will always look what do you want to attain. The main question is unemployment, and this is an alternative way to get, uh, for the young people, most of them, to get the, the jobs, to get their incomes, and to make uh, their lives uh, run. So if you are burdening with uh, these simple dubious fines because of your negligence and your non-commitment to uh, safety in the roads, then that should be another thing altogether. So the main question is about how do you make their livelihoods better? And I think I recommend the government for that. Now, there's another side now of the question. Will that help into that? Now, why don't we start with the money circulation, for example. If you look at the last uh, month review, uh, BOT report, uh, it showed that money circulation in the economy 
was three, 31 trillion, and that was an increase of almost 2.4% from last year. So one would imagine that there is a lot of money circulating for the look at the general uh, money uh, theory. But if you look at the credits, for example, uh, they have reduced um, for about 1% or so. Um, and then that has affected uh, the investments. And again, if you look at the credits, many of the credits, much of that money is going for the private uh, consumption, that almost 35%. You have very little amount below 20% going to investments. So does this budget address that? Mm -hmm. Of course, I don't think it does so much because much of what you are seeing is the same problem we have been grappling with. Uh, for the last five or six years, our economy has been what we have been terming, has been terming as economic growth is in fact uh, the debt-driven public spending. That's what has been growing because uh, the space for the private sector uh, to borrow, for example, in the economy and then to go to, uh, for the investment, uh, the private sector was crowded out. And that brought another problem. Uh, so were we seeing a lot more government spending, spending into projects? In the, in the projects. And that's what you see. And that's uh, what we see as economic growth. As economic growth. And you look, this budget is like spotting on that same same thing, Yvonne. The, the trajectory of the next year's uh, economic performance is the public, the debt funded public spending. It's not more of the private sector. And the, the question is simple. The, the, the reason is simple here, Yvonne. Uh, it's that when you want to grow the economy, you look at the mass prosperity. And what do you do there? You try to make the, 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 the activities that the majority of the people are involved in uh, productive. Now, this budget is not going to address that. Mind you, the April report from the IMF, Economic Outlook of the region, has shown that productivity has grown in the negatives in this country. So it's not growing as expected. And therefore, that is affecting investments. It's affecting the whole uh, question of growth. And it is also because of other taxes that are being uh, introduced. You, when you look at the economy again, you don't, you don't go industry. You go to the people. You, the main question is, where are my people? Now go. So we have to look at the sectors that have a lot of, people, a lot and of people, that is agriculture. And, and, and this is vindicated. Despite uh, uh, slow growth of the economy, uh, again, from our numbers, it is that uh, some sectors have grown, uh, you know, recommendably. For example, construction has been the leading sector, mining, uh, the th second one. You have um, communications. Uh, those are the, are the sectors that have been growing, even administration. Now, if these sectors have been growing to that extent, mm -hmm. uh, why are they not contributing much into the reduction of poverty? Because that's not where the people are. The people are in other sectors, for example, agriculture. agriculture. And, and it hasn't been utilized uh, properly. No, you have 1.3 trillion in that area, fishing, whatever, and everything in that bracket is, uh, is, is, is given 1.3. And if you look at from the COVID perspective, is that you would have invested a lot of money into that. That would have allowed the fiscal space, because as we speak, we are facing in economics what we call the fiscal hole uh, from uh, the, the masses. And, and, and I don't see that. If you go to manufacturing, for example, what we call uh, uh, the business owners, in this country, if one for the records, they're employing uh, below 500, no, 300 people, actually. Why are they employing below 300? And that's the main question. They're employing this lot because what is happening always is the regulatory capture, we call it. Those who are influencing the policies are looking at the uh, bank accounts, at the, uh, the balance sheet of the business. And this, this binge of talking about the, 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 the business uh, improvement uh, is a bit uh, a flawed again argument uh, because once you focus on the business question with a small uh, group of people, you are talking about the trickle down economics and that has proved uh, that is not functioning anymore, so you will have to go back 
to stimulate the, the economy from the, 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 from the bottom. And uh, I don't see that happening from two factors. One, I expected the budget, um, and I've been zooming around uh, Africa with my fellow economists and East Africa. Uh, we disagree on many things, but we agree but, uh, that until the vaccination is throughout the population, all COVID is over, is when the economy will be uh, moving as, uh, as, as, as we planned, because the overriding principle here is that COVID is not the passing cloud. So, so that, you think that uh, the fact that the government has not specifically said that what they're going to be doing about uh, COVID-19 will also have impact on the economic growth of this country? A brilliant argument, uh, a brilliant argument, and Yvonne. And Tanzania were different from what uh, Uganda have done and, and Kenya. Ye They've actually allocated budgets for COVID-19. A brilliant argument, Yvonne. Uh, you, if you go to the Kenyan budget, they have 14.3 Kenyan... Uh, 14.3 billion Kenyan shillings, that's a, in the tune of 133 US dollars. They have 560 uh, billion Ugandan shillings in the tune of um, 159 uh, US dollars. That is for vaccination. Um, and one would say, no, we have not, we're not interested in maybe in vaccination, let's, let's allow that. But we would have, uh, I think we, we would have chosen another path of protecting the economy as a shock therapy because COVID, whether you have it or not, the external shock will always influence the internal shock. So I would have expected the demand, um, the aggregate demand is stimulus. But maybe they're expecting um, support from foreign donors. Another, yeah, they are. Very good, Yvonne. You have I've seen from the G7 summit, they've been discussing you, how they're going to support you, African countries that's like Tanzania. A very good, that's a very so maybe good. Tanzania, so like the government is thinking there's going to be support coming in, so let's not go there. Yvonne, you are very right, and I think you have read very well the report. That's brilliant. It, they are saying, the, the minister said, they are hoping to get 571 million US dollars. Uh, that was promised by Dr. Um, uh, Georgieva, Kristalina, mm. the IMF director when he met the, the, the president. But in budgeting, um, you don't plan as per the amount you don't own. You plan as per the amount you own. And principal, let me put this clear. Uh, if, if your students, they're outside following your program, and you'd like to embed themselves in this business of policy uh, making and, and some sort, the, the policy is not looked from the, what is written. The policy is understood from what is actually, uh, is, is ruled from the political power that is in place. Number two, the time you put to manage that project, that policy, and three, the money you invest in that order. So, from the budget perspective and the policy tool, you don't see that. You don't see that connection. So you cannot say, actually, uh, that there is a lot, there is much about, about it. It's, it's, it's that about the, we are, we are being treated with the political theatrics and shenanigans in that front, and I, and I think the members of the parliament should mm. use their time wisely to advise the government. One thing that is very clear, I've been a great supporter of what I've called, I've termed in the last two weeks, I've written like three papers calling it Samianomics. And I'm very proponent of that. I think she's, uh, she has started with the right footing. Uh, but we need to help the president and help the country. If they got it wrong in the beginning, mm -hmm. because of what we call in political economy, the political business cycle, um, we may be ditching us, uh, we may, may be putting ourselves in a hole that will be difficult to get out of. And of course, with this uh, debt-driven uh, uh, infrastructure binge, you will find us sooner or later in the IMF straight jacket. And I don't think uh, any minister responsible for this uh, so, economy so, would like to go that way. Okay, so, so how should we go about it so that at least Tanzanians can see some changes, some, you know, some relief? One, I think um, it's not too late. Um, again, I, I love the questions you ask. It's not too late. Um, the government can take some initiatives to inject the money in the economy. One, to stimulate the businesses, but two, to have the safe needs for the people. If you go in, the, in our reports again, the restaurant sector has 
been growing the negatives, and that's the area that people uh, are being um, are being uh, employed. So I think they will do that, and we don't, we are not short of alternatives. Uh, uh, Yvonne, for a second, I wrote last year, and I do my calculations in the economy. Normally, you need one to two percent of the GDP to do the stimulus packages from the dem uh, from the aggregate demand. Uh, factors, I mean metrics, and that is almost to 2.9 to 3 trillion to inject in the economy. And you remember in 2007, we had injected 1.9 trillion to do that. And you can have a lifeline fund to protect the small businesses. That's about human development as per the theme of the budget. And they only need 0.5% of the GDP normally. That is in the tune of 5 uh, B, 500 billion or 700 billion at most. So the government can actually have, can, can allocate that. We have the funds to we, allocate we have the for money. the stimulus package. We have the money. It's not like we don't, we can't no, afford. No. We, we, we can afford that. We can now, afford look it. Look at, at what they're proposing on, the, on, 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 on oil, on petroleum, on oil. Uh, it's about 100, yeah? from 150 mm. to 50. 100, yeah. Now let me do, I, I've done my math. Uh, as per the current consumption of 35,000 uh, uh, barrels a day, uh, that's equivalent of 159 million uh, liters a day, you will have 500, points, uh, 500 million, uh, 500 million uh, thousand shillings, and that is one, almost 1.6 trillion a month, and you have 12 trillion a year, a year, Tanzanian shillings. That is enough to stimulate the economy, number one, and that is enough to get money into Tarura, what we have been saying about the, uh, the, the, the roads, the roads in, in rural yeah. areas mm -hmm. to help uh, uh, the agricultural risks in, in those areas, to help our moms and, and aunts and sisters. Uh, you can get that amount of money. And of course, you can get money to, for the loans uh, when it comes to university students. Okay, so um, there's some hope that as we said uh, we should be optimistic we should. if they listen to um mm. of views and uh, you know advice from the experts and everything like sure. that yeah so thank you very much for taking part and I'll see you next week for another business edition until then okay